Hey everyone, I'm Bradford with the Penny Pierce Guide to Personal Finance. In this video, we're going to be talking about the second prong of the IRS Free File Program, and that's going to be the IRS Free Fillable Forms. My goal for this video is to give you an overview of the program itself, provide you with the pros, the cons, and then help you decide if it's going to be a good fit for your tax filing needs. Before we head over to the IRS website, I'm going to show you around a couple of things that you should know for the Free Fillable Forms. Brief overview, what is it? In essence, the free fillable forms are basically fillable PDFs with a wide variety of different tax forms that you might need. It's pretty much the same as just printing out the tax form yourself, filling it out, and then mailing it in. With the key exception is one, hey, it's free. You're not having to pay some third party, whether it's a CPA or a tax preparation software company, and you actually get to e-file the form yourself. Big pro over actually just failing it out and mailing it in because one, you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks for your tax return to actually be accepted. And two, if you are due a tax refund, you're not going to be waiting months to actually receive it. You should get it within three weeks of actually having your tax return accepted by the IRS. Now that we know kind of a basis of what we're going to be talking about in this video, let's go over to the IRS website, which is just www.irs.gov, and I'll show you where to begin. Once you get to the IRS website, there's a couple different ways you can actually navigate through here to be able to get to the free filled forms. This is just one of the ways. So come here, click on free filing options. Here, we're going to be using the IRS free file section, so click on that. And then I've talked about in the past guided tax software. So if you're curious about that, you can check out the video right here. Otherwise, we're gonna click on free fillable forms. Click on yes, I need to start. And here it's gonna give you a couple things that you need to know before you get started. And I think it's just worth talking about them. First, all the account information is purged after October 16th of each year. So even if you use this in the past or you're planning on using it in the future, Every single tax season, you have to create a new account, and there's no way of being able to pull your previous year's tax information into this tax year. So if you use it, make sure you save copies of everything so that way you have those copies available to you because if you go to file using this next year and you didn't save your tax return, you're kind of out of luck because you can't just log into the system. You're going to have to go through a lengthy process of actually requesting that information instead of just having it right at your hand or saved on your computer. So. Only basic calculations are performed, so it'll be able to do some adding, subtracting things for you, but it's certainly not doing anything like TurboTax or h &R Block or things like that. Like I said, you have to create a new account every year. This is solely for federal filing, so state prep and state e-file are not available. And then make sure you look at the program and form limitations before beginning. Don't worry, I'm going to take us through that. So let's actually jump over to a couple of things that are available here with resources as well as the program and forms limitations. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is FAQs. They have a pretty good list of all the various frequently asked questions. It's just a hyperlink. What do the different colors mean? How do I close my tax forms? How do I get it back? If you have any questions, most of them should be covered here. Now they have a pretty short area on tips for success. I think it's worth reading through. Make sure you're checking your withholdings. Make sure you're doing your math. And if anytime you're using a form, read the instructions. I think the IRS instructions are actually pretty good. It's not full of lots of technical jargon. I think most people can read through them and understand what they're trying to convey. Use the computer operating systems. Make sure you have the minimum computer requirements. It's 2025, so this is probably not gonna be an issue for most people. Review the program and forms limitations. So to see, this is the second time we talked about that. Don't worry, I'm still gonna cover it before we go into the program itself. Make sure you print a complete final copy of your return for your records. Like I said, everything's purged October 16th of this year and any other year that you use this program. So make sure you're saving a full copy of your records. And then before you file, make sure you have the right number of dependents, make sure you've selected itemized or standard deduction, and then make sure you have the full amount of your taxes owed on page two, line 16 of 1040. Now with all of kind of those caveats and things covered out of the way, let's look at what are the actual restrictions for these forms. Cool. Right away, we see there's a whole lot of forms that are available on here. Obviously, Form 1040, so that's going to be your individual tax return. That's what most people are going to be caring about here. But you can go through here. It's going to tell you about a lot of forms that are available, well as well as any of their limitations. So I'm not going to go through all of the available forms, nor do you want me to go through here and spend 10 minutes just reading them. But what I do want to point out is forms with no limitations. So if you are filing a form, go through and check this section out to make sure that these limitations do not apply to you. A couple things that I think are important is, hey, are you a senior and you're used to filing on a form 1040 SR? Not applicable for you. And it just says basically that you just use the regular form 1040. The only difference is between the regular 1040 and the 1040 SR or aesthetic. The actual inputs and outputs are going to be the same. And then coming down to the bottom here, when it comes to W-2s, 
There is a cap on how many W-2s can be added. Fortunately, it's 50. I don't know of anybody that's gonna be having more than 50 W-2s added here. If they are, you are really hustling and grinding, so good for you. But Form W-2C, it does not support corrected W-2s, but you can basically just take the information on your corrected W-2 and enter it into a standard W-2 format when it calls for it in the forms. So before you start, make sure you go through and you read all the forms limitations, depending on what forms you need. But other than that, we can actually go over to the free fillable forms. I'll show you where you need to actually create an account, how you sign in, and then I'll show you kind of what the overlook looks like when it comes to once you've logged in and you're looking at the program itself. Sweet. So once you've clicked through the IRS's website and you get to the free fillable forms, this is what it's going to look like. Click on start free fillable forms. You're going to have to create an account. So putting your email, your phone number, big thing to know about is it does use dual factor authentication. So make sure you have your phone and your email available to you because if you don't get the six digit pin that it sends you when you create your account, you're not going to be able to actually log in. So make your username, make your password, click the sign in button. You're going to put that information in here. And this is what it's going to look like once you log in. So it basically auto populates an IRS form 10. 1040, which is going to be a standard individual tax return. And this is what you're going to see. It's going to show you page one, page two. You can go through, you can put in your name, last name, social security number, if you're married or not, what's your filing status, fill this out. You're going to go through top to bottom. And then it's going to say, hey, you can verify your federal withholding. You can do payment options, and then you can actually e-file your tax form. So to be able to add a form, if you're curious, you have to be on this first step, which is going to be fill out your tax form. If you're on any of the other pages, I don't think it's going to work. I've tried it on a couple of them and it just gives you an error. So make sure you're on step one. Come down here to add form. And then it's going to give you an option of what are all the different forms. So 1040, 1040 with additional dependents. You got W-2s, W-2Gs, kind of scrolling through here, all the different schedules and numerical and alphabetical order, all the different forms that you can clear about. And so let's just say I wanted to come in here and I wanted to add itemized deductions. I just add that and then it's going to add it to my tax forms in this upper left-hand corner. So a couple things, make sure you're saving, save early, save often, just like you were probably taught in school. When you're typing a paper, you're working on PowerPoint, anything like that, if it crashes, you wanna make sure your work is saved when you reopen it. And then big thing, make sure you print your return. So click on that button. It's gonna open up a PDF that is an exact copy of what you were filling out. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit, but you can say, hey, obviously I didn't fill anything out yet, so this is exactly what it has on the other page. But going back to this form, this is basically what it is. You can input your information. You can click the do the math button. So you can either save one of two ways. You can hit the save button right here or hit do the math. Both of them are gonna save your information. But that's basically how it's gonna calculate it. So relatively straightforward, this is what the program looks like. There's not a lot of bells and whistles. There's no like informational buttons you can click on. It's like, well, what is this taxes you paid? What does this B mean? If there's no hyperlinks to the instructions, so you're just gonna have to pull this up next to it, split your screen, put the IRS form 1040 or whatever schedule or form you're working on on the left, pull up the instructions on the right, and then go through and see, okay, I'm looking at 5E right here. All right, what am I supposed to be putting in for 5E? What specifically does it want me to put in there on the forms? Now that we've gone through kind of a brief overview of the entire program, a couple key areas that I wanted you to be aware of, kind of what are the pros, what are the cons? So on the pro side, what I mentioned earlier, hey, this thing is free and you get to e-file without having to use a third-party software. That's great. It does do some basic calculations for you. So, so long as you're using and staying within those basic calculations, you don't have to worry about you just pulling up the calculator on your phone and fat fingering a number and getting a wrong number. That's kind of about it in terms of the pros. So if you have a simple tax situation or you feel pretty comfortable filing the taxes yourself, this is a great option to not be required to pay somebody else to file your taxes. It's e-filing for you, relatively simple format, but again, there's no bells and whistles that you can expect from any sort of tax preparation software. What about the cons? Obviously, not every single tax form is accepted here. And if you have some sort of complicated tax situation, just like any other tax situation, unless you feel really confident with it, I wouldn't recommend filing it by yourself but it is still available to you so long as all the forms that you need for your tax situation are actually supported. Now you'll notice if you go through the form limitations, there's quite a few areas where you're not able to just attach documentation that you might require for any certain form, unless it has a specific box where you can type things in on the form itself. Now, if you're trying to provide any sort of documentation that you need to give to the IRS, you're at a stopping point. You can't use the free fillable forms. You're going to have to print them out and then mail them in, which you could have done anyway without the free fillable forms. You could have 
pretty much for a long time now. You can just print out the PDF, fill it out yourself, and mail it in. So the free fillable forms really isn't going to be doing anything beneficial to, for you in the first place, except for maybe doing some of the basic calculations. But again, you can still do that by yourself. So I hope that gives you a good idea of whether or not the free fillable forms is a good fit for you or not. Again, there's no big bells and whistles. It's pretty straightforward. It's basically a fillable PDF, but on the IRS's website. Now, if you went through this and you decide, I really don't feel comfortable with my tax situation, make sure you're checking out our whole playlist right here of different ways that you can file taxes completely for free, depending on your tax situation. I want to thank you for joining me today. And from your first penny to your first million, we're here to help.